This is Dave from Within Reason, and keep watching The Roman Show. This is The Roman Show. And the first topic that we have to talk about is this weather, man. But I have no idea how you guys did it. You had a great performance out there. I think it must be like 90. It feels like 100. Man, we had a, we had a really fantastic performance, and what's crazy is it was packed. You know, there was a, a lot of people out there. And we're from Alabama, so we're used to kind of the humidity, but this is something else out here, man. It's just you, as soon as you walk outside, you're, you're soaking wet. Dave, did you guys prepare for this type of weather? And what did you do prior to hitting the stage? Uh, really, you just guzzle down a couple of, uh, a couple of bottled waters and maybe uh, a couple of guys had some, some monster uh, vodkas and kind of take the edge off. But you just got to keep drinking water and just let the energy take over. And then when you get off the stage, you just hit the deck. Or our drummer actually ran off the stage and puked. Um, but it's all, it's all part of the show, part of the gig, you know. Well, you boys have had much success. You were on One Tree Hill. You were on the Grammy. The Grammy, I mean, that's just something uh, really cool, really cool last year. Tell me something, a little bit about that. Yeah, the Grammys, we were picked uh, part of a cool thing called Gig of a Lifetime where they picked an unsigned band, and they took us out to the Grammys for Grammy Week, let us play a show, and we walked the red carpet, and we filmed a really awesome commercial for the Microsoft Service Tablet. Um, and it was kind of really exactly what it was called, a Gig of a Lifetime. It was a, a really cool experience and probably the, the coolest thing we've done as a band so far in our career so hopefully the next step you know be showing up at the grammys in the next year or two uh as a nominee so we kind of got a little uh a little training at it so to speak you know new single enemies dropping in just a few this may and coming up this month in may tell us a little bit about the signals for those who haven't heard it yet what can people expect from it uh enemy is the first track off our album after the crawl it's a it's a sledgehammer is what we like to call it it's probably one of our upbeat songs we end our show with it uh it's dropping uh, first week in May, which I guess is coming up next week. Um, so we're hoping a lot of stations pick it up and a lot of people call in and request it um, and try to shoot it up the charts as fast as it can go. And then the album. You've had a couple of albums already. Only working on a new album. What can people expect? And are you guys doing that on the road? And where are some of the challenges? Well, yeah, we, we're always writing, you know, and we don't really rehearse that much until we get into pre production for the record. Um, so we'll kind of work some stuff out of sound check. Um, so we're going to uh, run a couple singles off our current record and then hit the studio in January um, and hopefully have a brand new record out next spring. What are some of the challenges when you guys are on the road and you're trying to write a single, you're trying to stay focused, but tours just keep coming up uh, and, and, and the importance of touring so people get to know your music right. and so forth? Well, you know, all of our songs are about like real life stories or, you know, something that happens to us or somebody we know. So it's those experiences that kind of mold the songs into what they are and we get the ideas and we all pass them around like we actually wrote an entire album a couple years ago all on our phones we would play something in the phone and send it to the next guy and then when you get into the studio it kind of turns into the final product everybody gets in there in that creative mindset gets in the zone um, so really when you're writing on the road it's kind of the base of the song you know the recipe and then you go in there and add all the flair to it AO technology you guys did a cover of that 50 cent and Justin Timberlake and then you turn it into a rock song how did that come about? And, and, and that's a challenge in itself to get a poppy song and to sound in very metal, very rock. Well, we used to sound check with that. It was a, kind of a joke. We, we played around with it one day, and we sound checked to it as a joke to be, you know, just a different song that we didn't play in the set. And we, when we were recording our record, we warmed up to it in the studio, and our producer, Nick Chawala, was like, whoa, like, we should lay that down and see where it goes. And it wasn't supposed to be on the record at all. And uh, he went in and put some, some post-production, little uh, some techno little things in it, and uh, it made the record. And, we, and once we heard the final product, we were just like, we would be crazy not to put this on the record. So we, uh, we got the okay from uh, Justin Timberlake and Timbaland and uh, 50 Cent, who were the writers on it. And they gave us a mechanical royalty and said, hey, run with it. How cool is that? You know, we've been seeing a lot of that. Even if you go on YouTube nowadays, you see all these these metal guys with the guitar and they'll sing like a Miley Cyrus and go into metal. I think I saw Jingle Bells in, in heavy metal. Yeah, it's weird. It's like people think just because, you know, we play rock and roll, you know, we listen to everything. Like, I'm a huge Sinatra guy. So it's weird. Our music, you can hear like the little bitty weird things that we listen to our music, which I think it's important to have a broad spectrum, you know, especially as a songwriter, that's important. So how do you guys get pumped up before hitting the stage? Do you listen to any specific music? I listen to a lot of Motley Crue. That's one of my favorite bands, and I've had the, the kind of the same routine for a while. Um, we always call it being shot out of a cannon. Like you always want to walk on stage and just explode. Um, so it's just kind of an internal thing. You psych yourself up, and a lot of times when the crowd's good and there's a vibe, and it's there's never a problem getting getting those on there. You know, Dave, we want to thank you so much. Just one last question. You're here in the festival. Are you gonna take around? 
take a look at some of the bands, any bands that you have not seen live and you're looking forward to seeing band, uh, live. And have you spoken to some of the guys like Corn, Jonathan Davis, Rob Zombie for some tips or anything like that? Um, I have never seen Corn and I've never seen Zombie, which is really cool because I've always wanted to see them. But when you tour a lot, you only get to see bands when you come across them on the road. Um, I've never seen them, so I'm excited to see both of those guys tonight and we get to see them again tomorrow. Uh, at Rockville, um, we have a lot of friends on the show tonight. Like Black Sun, Cherry, and See, there are some real close friends of ours. Um, so it's always good to catch up and uh, and get to see what they got going on and listen to their their set and kind of throw the support back and forth. But um, it, this is such a great lineup that just about every band that's playing, um, some of the bands I haven't heard of that I that I'm now a fan of, and some of the bands that I really like. And I'm like, oh, we're, we're so lucky we get to see this band today, and then this band today, and then this band today. So it's kind of a really cool thing to catch all these bands in one day. Awesome, dude. Thanks so very much for joining us here on The Roman Show, man. Thanks. Yeah, thanks. This is The Roman Show.